economic development. Senator Wetangula. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for an opportunity to eulogize Kenya's best president ever. Mr. Speaker, Shakespeare said, some men are born great, other men acquire greatness, and yet others have greatness thrashed upon them. Mwai Kibaki was not born great. He acquired greatness through sheer hard work, through a commitment to patriotism for his country. Mr. Speaker, we can say and identify those upon whom greatness has been thrashed and how they are unable to carry the weight of greatness. President Mwai Kibaki, Mr. Speaker, at the time he left the presidency and the leadership of this country was the longest serving member of parliament in the Commonwealth, having served his motherland for 50 illustrious years as a member of parliament. None of us will reach there. When I first came to parliament, Mr. Speaker, my role models in debate on the floor of the House included Mwai Kibaki, Omalwa Kijana, Martin Shikuku, James Orengo, George Anyona, and many others. And of course, you can't leave out Kennedy Kiliku in Kiswahili and Professor Rashid Mze. These were debaters on the floor of this House that anybody, even if you didn't agree with them, you could not but admire. During the times when budgets would be delivered, Mr. Speaker, Mwai Kibaki would stand on the floor of the House, and uh, Senator Bogisho can bear witness to this, and for a full hour, if not two, three hours, and that time there was no time limit on debate, and he would bisect and dissect the budget from A to Z. And if he didn't agree with it, he will finish by saying, Bure kabisa, and then walk out to go and have his cup of tea. I don't know of anybody that Mwai Kibaki violently disagreed with, even those that they differed in opinion. Mr. Speaker, I was given the privilege to work with Mwai Kibaki very closely. I was his assistant minister of foreign affairs for four years and a half. I was then his foreign minister, and my duty enjoined me to be very close with him in whatever we did, particularly in matters foreign. When he came to power in uh, 2002, Mr. Speaker, it's instructive to put on record that as the leader of the NAC coalition that brought together NAK, Fort Kenya, DP, and uh, Charity Ngilus, then NAC, and then LDP, he chose the leader of our party, Fort Kenya, as his vice president a man they worked with across Kenya, a man they trusted each other, a man they worked so well. Unfortunately, my party leader then did not live long enough to do what he could have done to change this country. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans will remember Mze Mwai Kibaki as a man who came to the presidency at a very difficult time. The shilling was at its weakest level. The economy was in tatters like it is today. And many, many things had gone wrong. But when he left the country, we all look back with nostalgia. We all look back in amazement as to how a man could do so much for a country within such a little time. 
when he came to power, Mr. Speaker, within the first three months, and those of us who are there, like Senator Bogisho can say, Kenya was rated by UNDP as the happiest country on earth, and Kenyans were classified as the most hopeful people in the world. Because Kibaki arrived with a message of hope. He promised free primary education within the first two months of his government. Kenyans tested the sweet cake of free universal primary education. And the enrollment in our primary schools just quadrupled. Children who had been hidden in the villages looking after cattle, working as house servants, all came out and went to school. To the extent, Mr. Speaker, that we had a seven or eight year old man called Marube. Was he called Maruge or Marube? Who came out and went to school and studied primary education. That is how Mzee Kibaki will be remembered. Mr. Speaker, Mzee Kibaki was a president with a difference. Senator Bogisho and Orengo, he was, I think, left, who worked with him in his cabinet, can tell you, he never entertained cheap gossip or gossip of any nature. The only time you sat with Muzeki Kibaki as his ministers, apart from those who worked with him, like foreign affairs, was after cabinet when you would all be invited to a lunch. There was no group gossip where people walk to state house and ruin other people's names and ruin other people's careers and destroy them. I remember my brother Bogisho through those state house gossips when he was forcefully removed from parliament. Muzeki Kibaki never entertained that kind of gossip, Mr. Speaker. He was a serious person. You went to his office and there's no time you did not find him busy reading, analyzing budgets, analyzing reports from ministries, analyzing reports from uh, international agencies. And at the end of the day, when you worked with Muzeki Kibaki, Mr. Speaker, Many people even started underestimating him, thinking because of his quiet demeanor, they could take advantage of him. And those of us who are close to him will always tell you, listen, young man, your biggest strength in your life, and particularly in your political life, is to always appear not to know what you know. That was his always clarion goal. Always appear not to know what you know. Let people think you're a fool, but you can see right through them. And that was Kibaki for you. He was a man who believed that this country had the potential to exploit. He was a man who believed in equity. He was a man who believed that this country, every corner of this country, deserved something. And even as he didn't go many places, Muse Kibaki would always ask his ministers, you have brought this project about this area. What about those other areas? One of the greatest selfless conduct of Mzee Kibaki, Mr. Speaker, is when they finished the super, thicker super highway. And we went there and some excited civil servant said, Mr. President, we are going to name this road Kibaki Super Highway. Kibaki asked him, Nakule hii barabara inaenda? Hakuna majina? You know, he didn't want the grandiose of being named after everything, every, everywhere you turn is so-and-so, international airport, so-and-so, uh, high school, so-and-so. Muse Kibaki did not entertain that. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, even as he was the best president in this country, we have very few things named after him. In fact, I would want to think that Senator Bokisha as the lead of government business, you should bring some motion in this house so that we name some national icons one or two or three, and name after this great man, so that we also immortalize his name for the future of this country. Because everywhere you go, there is Moi, there is Kenyatta, there is Kenyatta. I don't know if it is the first Kenyatta or the second Kenyatta, but it's Kenyatta all over, it's Moi all over. Uh, we don't slight them. They were named by Kenyans. But we also want Kibaki to have his space in the history of this country. Mr. Speaker, Nothing can be remembered even more about Muzeki Kibaki 
than his commitment to the peace and security of this region. It is through Mr. Kibaki, Mr. Speaker, that we created AMISOM to look after the challenges of peace in Somalia. We created AMISOM, we rallied our neighbors, and he entrusted me as his foreign minister to work with the UN, to work with the AU, to make sure that we bring peace and normalcy in our neighbor Somalia. When there was a flare up in the Congo with the Banyamulenge, Mr. Speaker, he sent me overnight to look for Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN. And within 24 hours, Mr. Speaker, we had assembled in Kenya the presidents of Uganda, Tanzania, Sudan, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Nigeria, South Africa, the UN, and the head of the EU to sit in uh, this is Michuki Hotel. What's it called? Windsor, Mr. Speaker. And we had to bring together and put President Obasanjo and President Mukapa as eminent persons to bring normalcy and peace to Congo. Another president, Mr. Speaker, would have said, who cares? I don't share a boundary with Congo. In fact, there are two other countries in between. Let the burning burn. But he had that feeling for every African, that whatever happens in Congo affects Kenya. Peace in Congo is peace in Kenya. Instability in Congo can be instability in the whole region. Mr. Speaker, when we had electoral challenges in the year 2007, Muzee Kibaki demonstrated statesmanship beyond any comparison. We, in his side of government, who believed we had won elections, and some of my colleagues who are hardliners, would not hear anything like, let's engage the other side. But within that frightening period, Mr. Speaker, when the country was burning, Muzee Kibaki called me and told me, my foreign minister, can you run to the AU and call them to come and help arbitrate in what is going on here? And that's how we brought in President Kufuo as the chair of the AU at the time. That's how we agreed on the eminent persons of Kofi Annan, Ben Mukapa, and Mama Grasa Machel. And Mama Grasa Machel of the three is the only one living. May the other two souls rest in eternal peace. And they came to Kenya, Mr. Speaker, and we had long protracted sittings at the Serena under Kofi Annan. Sometimes things were not working, and when things were breaking down irretrievably, Muzee Kibaki called us and said, I'll take charge of this because leadership and leadership alone cannot let us burn our country. We must sit together as compatriots. This group of Raila and his group are not our enemies. They are our compatriots. That we don't agree politically doesn't mean we burn our country. Where do our children go? And we sat together. He then asked me to call in Jakaya Kikwete, who was not a member of the eminent persons, but we had taken over as the chairman of the AU from President Kufu. Jakaya Kikwete came here, Mr. Speaker, and in 24 hours we were able to narrow the gap and agree to agree and have an agreement signed, come to parliament, alter the constitution, create the position of prime minister, and have the grand coalition government. Some of my colleagues, in fact, Mr. Speaker, our team leader, like the Honorable Mother Karua, did not agree with what we did. She even boycotted the signing of that agreement. But at the end of the day, we look back and say, the hardliners were wrong, Muse Kibaki was right, because we brought peace to our country, and our country rediscovered its trails and moved on. Mr. Speaker, Muse Kibaki respected everybody, those who worked with him. Like uh, Senator Orengo has been saying here about uh, forced marriages. You know, when you have a forced marriage and it doesn't work, uh, you end up with what I told you here, Mr. Speaker, in the Senate, that you'll have a messy and, divorce, and a noisy divorce. And you can see that uh, noisy and messy divorces are uh, happening because, Mr. Speaker, people have to respect each other. Even when you don't agree, you have to respect each other. And you can see, Mr. Speaker, that today 
We look back to what Mzee Kibaki did for this country. Mzee Kibaki left Kenya when the, a bag of fertilizer, and people like Senator Bogisho are farmers where they come from. A bag of fertilizer was 1,800 shillings. Today, a bag of fertilizer is 6,800. That is what Kibaki left us, Mr. Speaker. For the 10 years President Kibaki was our president, even during the troubles of 2007, 2008, there were no petrol queues in this country. We never saw them. Today, as we pride into mega projects, people are queuing for food, people are going hungry, people are queuing for petrol, farmers cannot afford inputs, the cost of fertilizer is unreachable, the cost of seed is unreachable, and everybody in Kenya, Mr. Speaker, is living on tender hooks. This is how we remember Mzee Kibaki, that he never led our country to a situation where Kenyans started regretting being Kenyans. He made everybody proud. He made all of us look back and say, this, our country, is truly the giant in the region. When we had problems, Mr. Speaker, with uh, Migingo, and uh, Uganda was claiming Migingo was theirs, we said it was our, 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 our island, and a lot of people started issuing very bellicose and belligerent statements. Let's fight, let's go to war. Muse Kibaki just laughed and said, Kenya and Uganda have got too much in common to fight over an island. He called Museveni. President Museveni came to Kenya. They sat and instructed us to put together a team from Uganda and Kenya and reserve the international boundary between Kenya and Uganda, starting from Kibish in the north down to the, to the T-junction of Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda boundary. In fact, it's then that we found where Mr. Bogisho comes from, some of our international boundary beacons had been uprooted. We had to put them back without fighting, without quarreling, without doing anything. That is Kibaki for you. A man who believed in peace, a man who believed in the tranquility of this region. I want, uh, Mr. Speaker, as I eulogize Mzee Kibaki, also to remember my brother, Kalonzo Musioka, who was Kibaki's vice president for a full term, that my brother Kalonzo, you did us proud because we worked together. I was your assistant minister in the first term of Kibaki, and in the second term, I was minister, your vice president. We did a sterling job. We had no backstabbing. We had no endless gossip. We had no situation where anybody looked down upon the other in whatever situation we found ourselves. You've had messages here, my brother Kalonzo, from Senator Orenga and Senator Ayako, that you are in a marriage that is forced. Don't get into a forced marriage. You have many options in your life, my brother Kalonzo, including but not limited to engaging Kenya Kwanza. We are available to have you because we know what you are, we know how dedicated you are, how a patriot you are, and you don't deserve what you are going through. When you became the vice president of Mwai Kibaki in the most difficult circumstances, you are not interviewed to be given the job. You served for seven years, for five years. You are Honorable Raila's running mate 2013, 2017. It now is most appalling, and this I address you, Senator Mutula and Wambua, that your party leader is now being demeaned to go for an interview to be a running mate. How can you allow this to happen? He was not interviewed to be Kibaki's uh, vice president. He was not interviewed to be Raila's running mate in 2013. He was not interviewed to be Raila's running mate in 2017. What has happened to his quality, status, and stature as a politician? And Senator Wambua, I want to send you, tell my brother Kalonzo that in one Kenya Alliance house there are many rooms, and those rooms are available to everybody, including my brother Kalonzo, because we need good people to work together. Let me, Mr. Speaker, uh, finish by touching on one or two things about... Kenya Kwanza, Kenya Kwanza, sorry, the, the answer will be corrected. When those of you who have opportunities to read, and I know that many of us uh, in Parliament are sometimes too busy with too many things, just pick the Hansard 
and read the debates of Muse Kibaki. Pick the Hansard and read the debates of Martin Shikuku. Pick the Hansard and read the debates of George Anyona. Pick the Hansard and read the debates of Wamalwa Kijana. And you will see that actually in Kenya, the stature of politicians is shrinking, and shrinking rapidly. Because sometimes you listen to debates and you wonder whether this is a kindergarten or a house of parliament. Because those leaders were patriots. They had their facts. They had their feelings for the country. And they stood and spoke and spoke well. And Kibaki is on record as one of the debaters who never carried notes to the podium to speak. He had everything scrolling through his mind and was never ruled irrelevant by any speaker. That is the man we are remembering, Mr. Speaker. And those of us who had the privilege to work with Muzeki back, Senator Bogisio here, uh, the tycoon from Nyeri, my brother, uh, Maina, Mr. Speaker, uh, Orengo, and Ochila Ayako, I think he's here. Those of us who worked with Muzeki Baki will remember that in him, was a gift to Kenya. In him, we had the best president Kenya ever had. In him, the economy grew. Through him, Kenyans loved each other. Through him, Kenyans embraced each other. Through him, Mr. Speaker, tribalism was put at the back burner of our country. Through him, Mr. Speaker, Kenyans felt that they had a president to be proud of. Even when there was a disturbance after the disputed elections of 2007, we regrouped together and everybody recognized President Kibaki as our president and Prime Minister Raila worked with him as our president. We sat in cabinet as our president and for your information, Mr. Speaker, during Muzek Kibaki's days, we had cabinet every Thursday of the week to make the country move. Today, I don't know when last the cabinet was held, because uh, when cabinet is held, it's not a secret. It is held, and Kenyans know that cabinet met, they made a resolution, it is made public. The constitution today even obligates that every cabinet decision must be in writing, must be signed, and must be sealed, and must be made public. We don't hear of any cabinet meetings anymore. The country is run by decrees. The, run is, the country is run by a couple of a few conspirators and the country is run uh, by people who don't consult others, Mr. Speaker. This is a big shame. We remember Mzeki Baki with a lot of nostalgia. May God rest Mzeki Baki's soul in eternal peace. May my sister Judy, your brothers Jimmy, Tony, and, uh, and David, uh, with whom we traveled so much when we moved around the world with Muzeki Kibaki. We wish you well. We wish you strength. Now you are total orphans. You lost Mama Lucy. You have lost Muzeki Kibaki. But that's part of life. Kuzaliwa ni bahati, kifo ni lazima kwa kila mutu. We celebrate the life of Muzeki Kibaki as one like no other. Some men are born great. Other men have greatness thrashed upon them. Others acquire greatness. Muzeki Baki, through sheer hard work, acquired greatness. We cannot say the same of others. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and may God rest Muzeki Baki's soul in eternal peace. Before I call the Senator, my